Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool arcade game video for you this evening. Look what we've got here. Something special. This is a Nintendo vs. Cocktail cabinet. Also known as the famous Red Tint because it looks like a red tint. That is not the official name though. It is called a Versus Cocktail Cabinet, I think. That might not even be the, uh, the official name. Let's see if it says on the little sign there. Heck no. Oh, it says MDS Table. Dot us. Let me. I've got my freaking focus messed up again. Would it be one of our videos if we're not playing with the camera while we're filming it? Focus. Automatic. Wham. MDS. Dash TBL. Dash US. And there's the power switch. And there's the power cord. Now this has a Georgia Department of Revenue sticker on it, um, so it's been around a little bit, you know. This poor thing belongs to our buddy Mike, so Mike, I'm sure, is watching this. We're finally going to fix your uh, red tent Nintendo cocktail there, Mike. Look how it just got redder just by looking at it with the camera. The white balance is doing its thing. So we're finally going to fix this thing now. So here is the story as I understand it. Now I didn't talk to him personally about what's going on with this, but here's how it was explained to me. He bought this thing and he had everything on it repaired individually. Everything works. He got it back. He plugged it all in and nothing works. So, <laughs> so we've got all the stuff that I think has already been gone through. It just doesn't work. So, are you ready for a nightmare? You know that show Kitchen Nightmares? And then I think he, Ramsey did, Gordon Ramsey did one about uh, hotels, hotel nightmares or whatever. I'm about to show you a Nintendo nightmare, okay? Now, keep in mind, this is just how we're starting, okay? This is not how we're finishing. And I've already decided we're saving this damn thing, okay? But here, I want you to see something, if I can do it with one hand. Clank, clank, clank. There's nothing left, people. It's done about gutted. It looks worse than it is. I think he took the monitors out so that he could move it. Luckily, I have the monitors. That's right. I've had them here the whole time. Ha, ha, ha. It has a power supply in it. So somebody has put a more modern switching power planet, which I am cool with. So let's see if we can identify what the heck we're looking at here. I think we might be better off opening the other side, if that side will open. So we're trying to figure out, if you don't know about these, basically there was a monitor on each side and you could play two different games at the same time. Or you could even play a four player game on both screens. Okay, so on this side, there's the power supply. This cabling would have ran to the monitor. And then the, I don't know if they're Sanyos or Sharps, but the Sanyo and Sharp monitors that go in these things also amplify the volume, the audio. So this is the audio as well that runs to that side that that monitor amplifies. And then that speaker plugs into that monitor that goes on that side. So the monitor's out of it. Okay? So all that goes with that. So really, on that side, it looks all crazy, but that's all that's missing is the monitor over there. So on this side, there is this holder here that the game board slides down in. And one game board plays both sides. So this hooks to the end of the board. This hooks to the end of the board. Right? And then these hook to the monitor on this side. So that's the video. 
and that's the audio. Now, this is just hanging. I don't know what that is. We'll have to look into that. Is that another one? We'll figure that out. Luckily, oh, and then the monitor plugs into this speaker on this side. So a monitor goes here. Okay. Luckily, all these manuals and everything are online. So it's not going to be that crazy. We'll just have to, uh, we might have to fix two monitors and a game board and a power supply, but that's about all that there is to it. The rest of this ought to be just fine. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a multimeter and we're going to see if that power supply is working. Because that's where it starts. So just like in all of our other games, we're going to start at the wall. So the power comes in through this cable, goes into a power switch, and then turns on that power supply. So uh, that's the very first thing we're going to try. Okay, folks, so I pulled up the manual and they call it the Nintendo Versus Table Type. <laughs> it's the table type system. So in the schematics, it shows you what's going on. So the power comes in, and then it goes into this power box here. What are they calling this? The power transformer, they call it. So it comes in and it goes through a fuse, and then it runs to a switch. And the switch is a double pole switch. It breaks both sides of it, right? And then Nintendo has this set up so that you can change the voltage coming into the machine. So if you if you if your wall is putting out 120, 100, or 90, you can change the little jumper, right? And so then once it does that, look at this. It sends out not 120 but 100 volt to these two plugs. These are where your two monitors plug in, and that's because those particular monitors are Japanese and they run off 100 volts. So to be honest, I've ran them on 120 before, but it's not a, it's not a bright idea. Plus, you don't want to those those monitors come with a plug on them. You don't want to plug them in. You don't ever want to plug them into the wall because they need an isolation transformer. So, if you don't know about that, basically, it just it, I'm not an expert on this. I just know that it does need an isolation transformer. But basically, it's isolating the ground, the chassis ground on the cabinet, the earth ground, from the uh, two lines that are running the the monitor because I think on the on the on the monitor board it uses one of the it uses the neutral as the ground or something like that. Anyway, you can't plug it into the wall. If you plug it into the wall, it will completely fry the monitor. Don't do it. It has a pretty little plug on it. You're going to want to plug it right into the wall. Do not plug it into the wall. Okay, so you need to plug it into this trans transformer here, and the transformer will only put out about a hundred volts, maybe a little bit more. It will run off, if this thing's high though, if it's running 120, that you can run a Sanyo on that. You just, the, 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 the voltage regulator on it's not really designed to run at that high of a, of a voltage. So it's, you're probably, uh, um, you're probably uh, lessening the life of it. So you might ask, well, how the hell did you run it on 120? Because I've, I've had cabinets before that I've got in and they had a Sanyo monitor in them. That was just wired into the regular um, uh, isolation transformer in the cabinet that was putting out 120 volts. So some of these operators would pull a, a, a Sanyo monitor out of something, and it, especially the some of the later, uh, well not later, but some of the mid and late 80s San, uh, Atari games had Sanyo monitors in them. And so the, some of the operators would pull those out and just wire them right into a different game, not realizing that they're supposed to be running on 100 instead of 120. Okay, and then there is a third one that comes out and provides 100 that goes over here to power the power supply. So the power comes in, goes through a switch, and then it gives you three 100 volt outputs. Now, that one runs up here to this power supply. So that's the power supply that they've replaced. Now, they, they replaced it with a 120 volt switcher that's supposed to run on 120, but they're powering it with 100. But that works too. I've done that before. Now you might have to crank it up a little bit, but so the outputs that it wants for a versus system is 5 volt and 12 volt and ground. There's also a 24 volt, but if you look, that 24 volt output on the original power supply 
It runs down here. I guess it does run into the edge connector. But basically its purpose is for the coin counters. It makes the coin counters work. So uh, you don't really need it. Your coin counters won't work anymore. They're 24 volt coin counters. But you don't even have to hook that wire up. So you need a 5 volt and you need a 12 volt. So we want to make sure that the brown, the red, and the orange from the uh, from the, the board harness are getting ground. The yellow and the green going to the board are getting 12. And the blue and the purple going to the board are getting 5. So let's go check all that stuff in the cabinet. Okay, folks, so I've got you barely rigged up on the control panel here, but you're looking at it. That's the power supply. I plugged this sucker in and I turned it on. How cavalier of me. But remember, there's no game board in it and there's no monitors in it, so there's really nothing you can screw up. So, if I can keep from knocking that camera over, that would be good. I'd like to knock, knock over the camera. So that's DC. I think I'm just going to check it. Well, I'm going to have the damn thing over here with me. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's move this slightly. Da, 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 da. All right. So the, notice how clean this is. That's probably because Mike bought a nice little... Uh, adapter from somebody. I would guess Mike's Arcade if I was going to guess. Mike can tell me. <laughs> Mike. Did I say Mike? I think I'm just calling him the wrong name. So I'm looking at the schematics. Let's see what those are supposed to be. Up, 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 up. Okay, brown, red, and orange should be ground. Yellow and green should be 12. Okay, so brown. Don't fall off the don't fall off the control panel there, people. And then the green. There's our 12. Let's see if that's still. I got that one wrong. Alright, yellow and green R12. Now I'm checking the grounds to make sure all three of the grounds are right. Okay, the purple is 5.16. The white, oh, remember we're not hooking up the white. And finally the blue is 5.16. Yeah, so see how the white is not hooked up? That's it there. See, it's, it's in the cabinet. But this power supply adapter isn't sending anything to it. It's because you don't need it. It's just a just the coin counters. It's not important. Okay, so that means that the power supply is just fine. But let's check something else here. We're gonna put it on AC. And I'm gonna see what voltage they're running this power supply off of. Not that it matters, but just so we'll know. 107 is what it's putting out. Now, I believe I spy with my little eye where the monitors plug in. One oh seven out of that jack, and one oh seven out of that jack. Okay, so what's that tell us? What do we know now? The transformer is working, it's putting out the correct power for both of the monitors AC and it's putting out the correct power for the power supply and then the power supply is putting out the correct power for the board. 
so it's on the correct wires. So it's safe to plug the board in and see what's going on. But the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to figure out what these four wires go to. I don't think it's anything important. It might be like, well, I don't know what it is. I'm going to look this up, though. I'm going to see what these four wires go to. So it's a four-wire plug, brown, red, orange, yellow. Now, in the power supply, that was ground, 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 12. But maybe they're different colors over here. So let me see what that plugs into. Okay, it's just a plug that plugs up the coin mechs on one side or the other. So there's probably two of them in there, and one of them is unplugged. But I don't know if you noticed earlier, some of the coin bezels and stuff are missing off of it. So that's stuff we still got to work on. We'll get in touch with Mike and see what he wants, to, if he wants to handle that, or if he's got the stuff for that, or if he wants us to do it. Okay, so we haven't done anything yet. We're just testing power supplies and stuff like that. So next up, I'm going to get the board and slide the board in because we checked and the power's fine. Everything's cool. So now it's safe to put the PCB in it. We'll slide that in and see if we can hear anything. Now, we won't be able to hear anything because of the monitor, but we'll slide it in, get it out of the way. All right, so here is Nintendo's awesome Versus PCB. This went in all of the Versus games. It used the same board in everything. So some of the games were a single monitor um, versus board. Now, I don't remember which side is the primary. But see how there are two kind of identical sets of chips? This set and this set. There are also two connectors, but I believe you need, well, I need, I believe you need those on both, uh, both types. But... They made a one monitor Nintendo Versus cabinet uh, that could have any of the games in it. Well, I shouldn't say any, most of the games in it. Super Mario Brothers, Castlevania, all that kind of stuff. Excite Bike, Hogan's Alley. And then they made an upright Versus unit system. I think they called it the dual system, actually. This might, the Versus, well, the dual system, I think, was the upright one. That was the cool one that's kind of arranged with two cabinets kind of glued together with one monitor doing this way and one monitor going this way. And uh, you use just one board in it, so this same board. But what you did was you put chips in both sides. So one set of chips is for one monitor and one set of controls. The other set of chips is for the other monitor and the other set of controls. And with this table type uh, cabinet, this one board runs both monitors. So this is for one side. This is for the other side. A very cool setup, if you think about it. Um, now, the way they worked was, these are obviously color adjustments for the monitors. So we'll just look at this one side. The batteries are to keep, uh, to keep, uh, all they really do, now before you trip, they're 2028, so they're not too old. <laughs> I guess they could be, though. I don't know. Um, uh, the, the batteries were to keep... Uh, what, what's the word for it? Histograms. Basically, the, the information for the bookkeeping. They didn't even hold settings or anything. It was just so the operator could tell how many times people had played it and stuff like that. So you really don't need them. You can take them right out throw them in the trash. I'm not going to because this isn't my game. This is Mr. Martin's game, and he might want them in there for a reason. Another thing is these uh, chips look awful new, probably because they've hacked them. Mike's been hacking stuff. I can tell just by looking at them, Mike, that they're hacked. You're running hacks, Mike. So back in the day, the way this whole setup worked was you bought a new kit and it came in a little suitcase thing. I've got a bunch of them at home. I probably need to bring some up here and show them off. But they came in a little suitcase thing uh, where you bought a new chip from the oper from uh, the distributor. And it came with new artwork for the cabinet. And it came with this. This is called the PPU, which is also inside of a, like a Nintendo NES, I believe. And this uh, RP, RP2A03 is the processor. So there's the processor, the PPU, and then these 
uh, EEPROMs with the code. So you, to, to change the game, you changed the PPU and these six ROMs, and then you had a different game. But eventually, luckily for us, so, so to, you could burn copies of the EEPROMs, no problem. But you couldn't copy this PPU, right? They all had different numbers. I think both of these are Hogan's Alley ones, though, so these two are identical. Okay, so uh, you had to have the correct PPU for the game. So an operator couldn't buy, like, Hogan's Alley and then just turn it into Excite Bike, Or maybe they could, I don't know. But certain PPUs were used for three or four different games. So if you knew which ones, I guess you could. But over the years, luckily, somebody has figured out how to change a little bit of code in these EEPROMs to make them run on any of the PPUs. So now, if you have any PPU, you can run about any freaking game on it. So, if I was going to guess, Mike, this one's Excite Bike because it's labeled as Excite Bike, and these say EB. And this one says Hogan's Alley, but you don't have a gun on the game. So I bet these are burned to make them Super Mario Brothers. That's my guess. There's going to be Super Mario Brothers. Now notice how they have them labeled. They have this one labeled 1D slash 6D, and it's in slot 6D. That's because it's on this side of the board. If they wanted to run this program that I assume is Mario Brothers over on this side of the board, they would put it in socket 1D. So they're all labeled double because they can go uh, on either side. I guess this one isn't. This one they're all labeled one. <laughs> But they're ruining my story here. But usually, whenever you got them from Nintendo, they would they would have two labels, one for each side, so that you could tell, depending on which side you're putting them in, what socket to put it in. So, one side is going to run Mario, one side is going to run Excite Bike. Um, you'll notice up here, too, that there are a few little capacitors missing. Whenever Nintendo sent out the gun kit... To make these work with the gun games. So there was Hogan's Alley and a couple other ones. D Duck Hunt, famously. Whenever they sent out the gun kit, they sent out a little piece of paper that said, Hey, the gun won't work right unless you cut this cap, this cap, and this cap off. I have no clue why. I'm sure some of you do. But for whatever reason, you had to cut a few capacitors off of the PCB board to make the gun work. And that's that. And up here, they also had two sets of dip switches. One for each side. But again, if you were running this in an upright cabinet, one whole side of the board you wouldn't use. I don't remember which side. I would just show you. But one's called the master side, one's the slave side. But one, one set of these would be unpopulated if you were running it in an upright. You could put the chips in, but they wouldn't do anything because they uh, they'd be outputting a signal on a monitor that wouldn't be plugged in because the harness is different on the uh, one monitor version. And this is not to be confused with the Nintendo Play Choice system, which was several years later that did something similar, but that's for a whole other video. An entire other video. Okay, folks, so we slid it in. We can turn it on, but it's not going to do us much help because we don't have the TVs installed, the monitors installed. Now, the... On most games, you can put the board in and press start and listen and hear if it's playing. They call it playing blind. You can't see it, but you can hear it. That tells you that the game board is at least trying to work, right? It's running code. But you can't do that on this one because on the uh, Sanyo uh, monitors, the monitor itself amplified the sound, so the speakers plugged into the monitor. So without the monitor installed, or even if the monitor is installed but it's not working, sometimes depending on what's wrong with the monitor, it won't amplify the sound. You can't tell that the, you can't hear anything. So we've got to put a monitor in before we can hear anything. So uh, I think uh, just because this side is where we're getting all the stuff, we'll put the other monitor in first. So let me go grab one and I'll show you the, uh, show you what the monitor looks like. Okay, folks, so this is something very special. This is, I think it's the Sharp XM. 18, 13, 18, something. But uh, these are only really found in these red tents. They're in, I think they're in a few cocktail tables too, but not many. 
I believe it's sharp. Some of these were Sanyo, the, the 19 inch ones. So the, the uh, Play Choices had Sanyos and Sharps in them, just depending on which one you got. And the punch outs and stuff like that. But uh, this is actually the um, transformer for the audio. This plugs into the speakers that we were looking at. Uh, let's see what we got. Right here is the plug that you plug the audio into. And then the video is going to be on the other side. Plugs in there. And here's all your adjustments. Now, I don't know, man. These caps look kind of old, Mike. I guess we'll plug it up and see how they look. I might need a cap kit. These capacitors, I'm not a hundred percent that they've been changed recently. Maybe. Let's look on the bottom for clues. What do you think? Well, the bottom has a big plate on it, but see this big one here? You can see the solder on the back, and it looks like it's been changed at some point. So it's had a cap kit. At some point, the capacitors have been replaced, so we'll see. Um, let me show you the burn end, too. I can't get a good picture of it, but there's a little bit of burn in on it, and I can't tell what game it's from. I can't really get a good... So that says one player, I think. That's probably two players. I can't tell what game it's from. It's probably a Nintendo versus title but who knows okay and there's also some some uh, adjustments down here too that you can get to from the front very easily the other ones are over here which are the vertical linearity the sub brightness there's also a brightness on the front blue gain green gain red green red gain okay so we're going to slide it in that other side and plug it up what do you think about that Okay, so for now we're just trying to put it all back together and test it out, see what's working, see what isn't. We don't have the bolts, actually, to hold them in, but that's because uh, whenever Mike brought it up, he took the monitors and everything out. So he just wants us to get it up and running, and then he's going to take the monitors back out whenever he takes it home. He's got the bolts and stuff with him, so that's cool. But uh, we plugged it in, the video plugs in over there, the audio plugged in over here, the speaker plugged in down below, the power plugged in down on the power uh, transformer and so I'm gonna put this down go around to the back and open it up so I can watch the back of it and uh, we'll turn it on and see if anything blows up okay so here's the back of it we're gonna watch it while we turn it on a lot of times people turn stuff on and they want to run around to the front and watch the front but there's plenty of time for that let's watch the back and see if it catches on fire first right so here we go sounds like the monitor came up or at least I heard high voltage. I'm watching to see if we get any neck glow. So the neck should start glowing orange. Sometimes it's easier to see on certain monitors than others. I see nothing. Doesn't mean it's not though. Okay, nothing's on fire. Nothing. I think that's a let's so let's turn off the lights. Nothing on the tube. Oh, I see some neck glow down in there. Y'all can't see it. But it's barely there. Let me see if I can brighten it up enough where you can see it so you can see what I'm talking about. about as bright as I can get it. You can see it a little bit, right? There you go, you can see it. See the orange right in the middle of the screen? This one's very dim. So there ain't much to it, but it is there. Okay, so let's see if we can start it. We should be able to hear it because we have the speaker plugged in. 
I don't know if I can coin it up though. All right, we got nothing yet. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna look in the schematics and for Mario Brothers, if the, if I've got the right one plugged in, I'm gonna see uh, how to set it on free play. See if we can get it to play for, oh, we're getting something. Uh-huh, flat screen, I mean flat line. This thing needs a cap kit, that's basically what's going on. Mike, you need a cap kit, buddy. Now, particularly on a Sharp or a Sanyo, if you get a flat line like that, sometimes it's this weird little thing where it's in service mode. There is a switch on the chassis to put it in service mode. I don't know why the hell they do it like that, but they do. I'm going to turn it off before it burns the line. If you leave it like that too long, it'll actually, since it's brighter right there, it'll actually burn a line into the screen. Sometimes on old Donkey Kongs and stuff, we used to get them. And the, the Sanyo monitors, they would start folding over on the edge, and you'd get a bright line like that about an inch in off the edge, and a damn thing would burn on there permanently. So even after you fixed it, you could still see it. Okay, so uh, let me grab the other monitor, and I'll show you the, uh, the service switch. Okay, folks, here's the second one. I looked it up, too. It's the XM1801, Sharp XM1801. Not to be confused with the XM2001, I think, which is the 19-inch version. And confirmed that, yeah, these were pretty much only in red tint cocktails. Now, these do not have the service switch. It's only on the Sanyos. These do have a little switch right there. But that is to uh, reverse the, I, I think it's the, um, it inverts the video. For inverted video or regular video. But we'll see. Now this particular one, this is the second one, has definitely had a cap kit. I can see fresh new caps all over it. So, that other one, I'm thinking probably just needs a cap kit too. But what I'm gonna do is, I put it, I'm gonna put it on free play, and then we'll see if we can get that other one to make any noise before we slide this one in there to get right in the way of the other one. So it looks like on Excite Bike or Super Mario Brothers, if you turn on the first three dip switches, um, it will uh, put it on free play. So right now, I don't know which side we've got hooked up over there. I, th I think that is, I don't know. I mean, it should be the Mario Brothers side. That's how they've got the art, but I don't know yet. But I, I put them both on free play. It said Excite Bike and Super Mario Brothers. That's how you put them on free play. So they're on free play. We're gonna turn it back on. I hear something. I can hear you, Excite Bike. So we got Excite Bike on the other side. We might have to swap our art. I hear Excite Bike though. I'm excited that I'm hearing Excite Bike. Okay. See how we don't have anything on the screen yet? That's going to be. All right, yeah, so see my volume's down. Got our buzz going. Don't worry, folks. That was just the other side latching down. <sighs> I think I'm about to have a heart attack. I can't get it to start. Maybe that's because I need to start it over here. Hmm, I don't know. I heard it though. Did you hear it? Yeah, I'm going to play it for you again. Let me put you down here near the speaker. We'll turn it off and back on. So it's trying. Um, I'm wondering if we just don't have... We still got some issues. We got to get where we can see it on the freaking screen, people. That's just what it is. Okay, so I'm going to slide the other monitor in, though, and then we'll see if we get any better luck on that side. All right, folks, now I've got them both in there, but I haven't turned it on. So I open this side back up so I can watch the back of that one when we turn it on. 
Now this one's out of cap kit and it's got a new flyback. So, I don't know. I mean, it could be that that didn't get it going either and that's why it was down here. So we'll see. Hopefully nothing catches on fire. Now they're both going to come on. They're both plugged in. Woo, lordy. Now you see what I'm saying. <laughs> now was that just... Was that just dust snapping off, or what the hell? You probably didn't see it because of where I had the camera. We got a big spark from the anode up here. We're gonna try it one more time. Sometimes it'll do crap like that just because it's It's got little issues. There's also something to be said for a smoke test. If you've got problems you can't figure out, just leave that sucker on and you'll figure out what the problem is. It'll burn something and slap the hell up. Might have blew the fuse on that monitor. I ain't got nothing on the screen. I got nothing. Boy, that sure seemed like a flyback issue. Uh, you probably, you might have saw it the second time, but basically both times it did the same thing. We're throwing sparks from the anode uh, over to the the um, the dag around the the tube. Sometimes it'll do that if the ground is disconnected. Doesn't look like the ground's disconnected though. All right, I'm getting nothing on that screen. So I think we're fried. Okay, so we're gonna we gotta get a video of us fixing both monitors, but I'd love to hear some sound out of a game starting or something, you know. Alright, so it's trying. Doesn't sound like Mario though. We got issues on this one, folks. Definite issues. So that's where we're starting with. We're going to have to put a cap kit in this one and see what's going on. And then we're going to have to put a cap kit and we'll take that one all apart and see what the hell is making it spark and do what it's doing. Let me, uh, let's try it one more time, shall we? Now, did you notice how it's still making sound so it didn't blow everything on it so the fuse is probably still good so it's probably about to do the same exact thing again Let's see if we can keep these up out of the way all right one more time here we go don't get scared I'd love to reach. Let me turn it off first. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to reach down in there and turn up the flyback just to make sure they don't have it all the way down. Didn't seem like they did. Let's try it again. Okay. Well, that's not Mario trying to play. We've got nothing on the screen. All right, folks, so we got one completely dead monitor, except for sound, that's crappy. Um, so I'm gonna say that's probably a screwed up cap kit. There might be a couple caps in backwards. And then this one needs a whole cap kit. It doesn't look like it's had one in a while. And hopefully that'll get us going. So that's what we got for today. So leave your comments down below. The good news is, look, this one's got a full screen now. What the hell? I gotta try one more thing. I'm gonna reverse the video and see if we can get the video from the other side of the board up on this one. Okay, so I unplugged this monitor from the power because we don't need it sparking and crap again. 
and then I took the signal that was running to that monitor and ran it to this monitor. So let's see, uh, let's see what we get out of this one. So it likes that better. So So the amp's working. Let's see if whenever the the tube fades in we get a picture. At least the at least the amp works, but it's the controls over here. It might pop in here in a minute. Sometimes if it's caps, uh, sometimes when they heat up, you'll get a whole screen. A second ago, it seemed like it was full screen. I'm gonna turn it back down just a little bit, just in case it, uh, it doesn't. I don't want that line to get burned in there. But it might pop, pop out full here in a second. So yeah, a cap kit is probably gonna fix this side. The other side, seems like the board's got a problem. So the Mario part of the board, if that is Mario, uh, the Mario part of the board has a problem. Um, and that monitor is obviously fried. It has the cap kit in. I'm going to guess there's a couple caps in backwards, though. But here's the issue. Earlier, when I only had this monitor in, you heard it just like I heard it. It was playing the theme song to Excite Bike when it came up. And that was with the other signal hooked into it. So I think there's some ROM problems on the board. That's that's why uh, the other side's not sending video out. It's sending out the the signal, to, the sound for uh, for uh, Excite Bike, but who knows? But we'll figure all that out. Maybe it's not going to pop in on us, people. We're getting brighter again. I'll give it a second and come back if it pops in. Okay, so it popped back in. Clear cap kit type stuff. Obviously the screen's turned up way too high. See those diagonal lines? That's the retrace lines, so the screen voltage is turned up too high on the flyback. So that one needs to be completely gone through, but it sounds good, and it looks like it's going to have a good picture. See the green? The monitor looks very purple. Because there's plenty of red and blue, the green is a little low, but that can be adjusted. Now it's the controls and stuff over there, so I can't play it. But through the magic of long arms, yes I can! Nintendo when I was a kid, we played the hell out of this. Me and my brother Donnie. Now, if you haven't seen my brother Donnie, that's our other channel. Just wrecked his ass. I wrecked you, Donnie. Uh, we used to play this whenever we were kids. Go check out his channel, my brother Donnie. We are, uh, we're always doing crazy stuff over there. It has nothing to do with arcade games, though. Usually working on trucks or buildings or mobile homes or whatever. Go check that out. 
We'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links to buy things. Whenever you do that, it gives us a little royalty for uh, sending you to Amazon. Thank you so much for everybody that's been doing that. And if you like the video series so far, give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Now, what did we get accomplished on this one? All we did was test some stuff. We haven't fixed anything yet. But you can bet your butt that we'll fix it next time. So see, we'll see you on the next video. Also, we line these up a certain way so that we film all this in advance. I won't upload this video unless we've already fixed it. So if you've seen this video, please believe we've already fixed it. And the next video will be up in a day or two. So uh, we'll see you on the next one. I'll uh, hang on to this video until we fix it, which will probably be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll upload them all at once. So, uh, like I said, give us a thumbs up in your comments below for taking the trouble to film it for you. Check out my brother, Donnie, his channel. Link is below. And we will see you on the next video. Excite Bike.